Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Chelsea Holly. I am with the Art of Life Guided Painting. Thank you for joining us today. If you have never tuned in before, we are gonna take you step-by-step step through the painting process. Today, we're gonna to be painting uh, the Michigan Lighthouse painting. This one is actually based on the lighthouse over by Silver Lake. My mom had a cottage there for years, and so me and the kids would always go, and you come sort of up over this hill, and there's the beautiful lighthouse. You can actually go in and walk up to the top. So this painting is filled with wonderful memories for me. If you have purchased our kit, uh, you can follow along. You can get out all of your supplies now. If you have not purchased one of our kits, you can go to theartoflife.info. That's our website. You can order it right online. That also comes with the option of purchasing classes there too. All right, if you are using supplies that you have at home, absolutely do that. You will still be able to follow along. If you do not have a stretched canvas, you are just using canvas board, or if you wanna make your own painting surface, all you have to do is take a nice piece of paper. This, I'm using cardboard that I got off of one of my children's sketch pads, okay? And I have just taped a piece of paper right onto it. You can use masking tape, painter's tape, duct tape. Tape it up, tape it real good. All right, I'm gonna come in close, you ready? Ready? Whoa. All right, so you can see that I've taken the tape and overlapped the edges of the paper just a little bit. The important thing to remember if you are going to be using paper instead of the canvas is to leave the tape on until your beautiful creation has dried. That prevents it from wrinkling or curling as it dries. All right, all right. So some of the other things we're going to be using, I'm going to be using these four brushes today. You do not have to have four brushes. You can use what makes you happy. I believe in our kit we have the three brushes. Use those today. So I'm going to tell you which brushes I am using. I'm using this big one. I make up fun silly names for them and today I'm calling this big one The Rock like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You'll notice a theme that's happening. All right, this is his smaller, yet not less significant friend, Magic Mike, Channing Tatum. There we go. You can see a theme happening. All right. All right, all right, all right. We're calling this one the Matthew McConaughey, because he just slides on in there. Um, and then this little one we had another name for, but at one of my public events, we have live events as well. And somebody yelled out, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, and this will forever be the Kevin Hart brush, because he's amazing. All right, so we have our brushes. You get out your brushes. If you only have three brushes or two brushes, that is okay. You can make this work for you too. All right. I'm using acrylic paint today. I'm also only using one camera. So I'm gonna be moving you in just a second. Some quick housekeeping stuff. If you are enjoying this and you want to find more fun videos to watch, you can go and find us on YouTube at theartoflife.info. All one word, theartoflife.info. That is also our website. We try to make it as easy as possible. You can find us on Facebook at The Art of Life Guided Painting. Okay. So the Art of Life Guided Painting and the Art of Life info. Well done. All right, here, ready? You're gonna travel with me. Ah, you didn't know you had it in you, did you? You can fly. Working with one camera today, so this is what you get. We ready? Can everybody see? Okay. Ah, all right. So today we're gonna to be going through this beautiful painting. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm going to get out my canvas. Now today I'm gonna to be following along with you on, where'd it go? There it is. All right, I'm gonna be following along with you on my beautiful eight by 10 canvas, which is what usually comes in the kit. We're gonna be using our acrylic paints. All of my colors are pretty standard colors. 
I'll be naming them as we go. You ready? We are gonna be using burnt umber acrylic paint or brown, any brown will work. Okay, we are using white, black, red, and I'm using a bright green and then also a little yellow today too. are going to use our nice bright blue. Now I also have an ultramarine blue and if that's what you're using that's okay. You just add a little white to it to lift it and lighten it and I'm going to use my nice bright blue today. So these are the colors we're using. You can use any color you want that makes you happy. You don't have to do the same thing that I'm doing. If you want to have a bright red lighthouse instead do that. Also, I have glitter, which I like to add to uh, a lot of my things. Don't be afraid of the shimmer, my friends. It's good for you, I feel like. Don't eat it, it's not that good for you. Okay. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is add our horizon line. Actually, it's not the first thing we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do is uh, talk about water. I have a cup of water here that I use for rinsing my brush. I also use it when I'm blending colors on my canvas, so I highly recommend you have one of those. I also have paper towel here for drying off my paintbrush after I rinse it off or wiping paint on it. If you want to be eco-friendly, you can use a washcloth. That'll work as well. Don't use one you love because acrylic paint does stain clothing and washcloths. All right. So we have one step left before we get started. Um, when we do it in our live classes, I tell everyone this is mandatory and binding. Real talk happening right here. So you can follow along with me. Are you ready? Okay. Repeat after me. I solemnly promise to relax and have fun. To not throw my canvas across the room and to not say any of the following things. Mine sucks. Can you do it for me? I thought this was paint by number. I can't stop playing with it. And I promise to be proud of myself no matter what. All right. We're ready to paint. Some of you are having a glass of wine or a fun beverage with this. That is okay with me. Go ahead and take your brushes, stick them in your cups of water, and now we're gonna start with our horizon line. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is take our medium flat brush. We are gonna use some of our nice bright blue paint. Dip that brush right in your bright blue paint. We are gonna make a line um, about two thirds of the way down. Right here, ready? We're just gonna go part of the way across. Don't go all the way across because we wanna leave room for our lighthouse. So I want you to think, where's my lighthouse gonna be? Probably right here. If you wanna measure it, I have tiny child hands and I'm doing it on an eight by 10 canvas. So. Don't quote me on this if you're using a different size, but it's roughly as long as my hand. But either way, you're gonna do it part way across and then you're just gonna do the rest of it right there, okay? All right, so that's gonna be your horizon line. We're gonna draw a nice little line where we think that our lighthouse is gonna go on either side. Remember to angle it just slightly and then we're just gonna draw the outline. How tall is it gonna be? We wanna leave a room for a little bit of sky and then the top part. So I'm gonna make mine go right up to here. So remember sky and then room for that very top little roof part. And then we're gonna start the bulk of it. And we're just gonna angle down slightly. It doesn't have to be a big angle, just a little bit slightly widen. All right, 
Once we have that, we're gonna pull it down to where we think that our beach is gonna go. So you notice I went below my horizon line just a little bit. And I'm gonna go right from here, and I'm just gonna swoop it down. And that's where my beach is gonna go in the front, in the foreground. My water's gonna go right over here. So now I know I have sort of a nice divide going. And you can put your line right here if you want to. You don't have to because we're going to put some grass over here. In fact, you can just paint that in blue right here. I'll give you a head start later. Okay, once you have that done, if you have a larger brush and you want to cover a lot of ground really quickly, you can. Otherwise, you can take the same brush that you're using and we're going to start at the top. Just go back and forth with some of our blue paint. Now we're going to do just the top portion and then slow down. For those of you who are using a handheld device or a tablet to watch this, you can actually zoom in and get real close to the action if you need to. So you can just zoom in on this portion and see exactly what's happening for all of the details. Zoom out if you want to see my lovely face. Is that, no, this is it's right here. All right, I'm real silly, just wait, it gets better. Okay, so we've done a little bit of this here. And then we are gonna add a little bit of white paint. So I'm going to be real purposeful and put a few little blue splotches. Just like that. Splotch it up. Splotch it real good. Normally when I'm painting, I have music in the background because it helps me paint. So I highly recommend, if you don't have any background noise going on, Pause this, put on your favorite tunes. I feel like music is very helpful when painting. All right. Oh my, bless me, sorry about that. Okay, so once you've got your blue splotches, go ahead and wipe that off on your paper towel. You don't have to rinse your brush, just wipe off that extra blue you'd like to rinse it in your cup, you may, but you don't have to. All right, so once I've done that, I'm gonna dip this in my white paint. We are just gonna brush that over our background here. It's gonna lighten up the closer we get to our horizon line. Nice cloudy, nice blue sky with some swooshy clouds. All right, I'm being very careful not to go over my lighthouse, but just to paint right up to it. And I'm using this brush stroke called cross hatching. So you just go back and forth. Now, if you feel like this is a little too light or a little too wispy, you can always dab a little bit of blue on your brush just go right back into it with your blue just to help it blend a little bit again just starting right I'm putting my brush right right up against the lighthouse and just pulling out, right? I'm keeping my brush strokes horizontal and I'm just starting at the lighthouse going out. And I'm taking it right down to my horizon line and I'm trying to keep that very horizontal as well, as flat as it can be because water always finds level, right? Right. It's your science for the day, by the way. Water finds its level. So I've noticed in my videos that my hair gets a little crazy and wonky in the back. 
Um, so if that's happening, just know that I know and I can't really do much about it because I have kind of poofy hair. So that's just what's happening. Sometimes it's just about acceptance, right? All right, if I'm moving too fast for you, I'm gonna encourage you to pause your video and take the time that you need to catch up. Take the time that you need. Now we're gonna be going over some of this with some wispy clouds. more toward the end once this is dry. So once you have a nice coat of some textured blue and white on there, it's okay to call it, call it complete for just a minute. If you are still seeing some of the canvas through, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see a, a few of these like canvas holes um, because my paint is dry, I'm just gonna dip my brush right in my cup of water I'm just gonna go over those a little bit just to help that paint glide. When you add water, see how it's just really helping fill in those little canvas squares. If you're painting on paper, you probably won't need to do this, but you might. It never hurts to get your brush a little thing. Works better when it's wet, am I right? All right. Okay, so sky is on. We're happy. Woo. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is add, I think let's do, let's do our water. All right, so rinse off your brush. I'm gonna get all that white off of there. Rinse your brush off. Just wiggle, wiggle it around in your cup and then dry it off on your paper towel or washcloth. And then I'm gonna take the same blue, just on the same brush. And I'm just streaking it back and forth, just like that. Now, if you want to give this a really nice finished look, you can actually carry the paint all the way around the edge and do a wrapped canvas look. All right. So without rinsing off my brush, I am going to take some green paint. Find a spot on my paint palette here. I'm gonna take some green paint. So I still have blue on my brush, right? Blue. I'm just gonna dip it into my green paint. While it's still wet, I'm just gonna brush a little bit of it in. And if you have too much on there, you can use your brush, wipe that extra paint off and just scoop it off of there. And then we're gonna paint blue right over it. It's gonna blend in really nice. There we go. We've got just some nice greeny blue water there. All right, so let's rinse off our brush again. We are gonna be using our brown. Rinse off your brush. I'm a vigorous brush washer. I get serious with it. Mm -hmm. Not as serious as Bob Ross gets. He's a little intense, but I get pretty serious. Shake it around in there. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of white paint and a little bit of brown paint and mix them together. to make sort of a nice light brown color. 
Now you're welcome to add a little yellow into this or a little red into this. Feel free to experiment with these colors. If you add a little yellow, it will give it that golden sand look. If you add red, it will be more of a pinky, pink sand look. Just depends where you like to go swimming. All right, once you've got some of that nice brown mixed up, we are gonna start right at the edge of our lighthouse. We're gonna make a little line just like that. Just a little dab, okay? Just shoop. And then we're gonna go right from the edge here over to the edge of our canvas, right above the corner. Now once we've done that, we are going to take another line and we're going to make another line right here. It's going to be at an angle. This is where we're going to start our path that we're walking down. So we're going to have grass over here on the left and grass over here on the right in front of our lighthouse. We're going to have sand right in the middle. I'm going to be very purposeful and make a nice clean line right here where my water starts. And then I'm just gonna go kind of back and forth and fill this in any old way. Having fun yet? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. I'm spoiled though. I get to do what I love as my job, which is a treat. And I get to share it with all of you, which is an even bigger treat. I get to get mushy with people who can't tell me to stop because you, you are in the screen. All right, we are going to add some shadows now. So I'm just going to take this brush wipe off my extra paint just like we did with the blue i'm going to wipe off my extra paint so that i still have some you don't need to rinse it in the water but you're just gonna get the extra gobs of that light brown off and i'm going to dip it in my straight dark brown my nice base color and again if you don't have a burnt sienna very official art color. You can use any any dark brown, chestnut brown, any kind of brown that makes you happy. So I'm just gonna start adding some shadows by doing some little back and forth wiggly lines. So I'm just wiggling back and forth just like this. And I'm gonna do that over here too. I'm gonna just bring it up on the edge here. And this is the shadow that the grass is making. And maybe there's just a few in here too. We'll just let's brush those in just a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to add a little bit of red or even blue to these shadows, that's okay. Those add nice. If you want to add just a little red to your brown and throw a few little, a few little shadows in there with the red. It's a little pinky. That's all right. And I'm just gonna add a little more light brown right here just to kind of blend these in. I didn't wash my brush off, so as I'm dipping my brush in the light brown, it's gonna blend with that darker color and with the red. And I'm just gonna bring it right back into some of these shadows. I'm taking my light brown and I'm going back into the shadow areas from the middle and going out, just like this. And you see how it's sort of softening those edges? Because they were kind of intense, weren't they? So we'll do it over here now too. Gathering just a little bit more light brown on my brush. And I'm just gonna go back into the shadows just to tone them down just a little. See how that softens that right up now? Yeah, that one needs it a little bit. Okay, 
So now we've got our nice sandy path. Later, if you want, you can maybe add a few little footprints or puppy prints, or you could even put, um, when I was teaching this once, I had a woman who painted a little girl with her pail walking down there, and that was very sweet. So feel free to personalize these paintings. That is fine with me. All right, rinse off your brush. Dry it off. And we are going to be using white paint. We want a nice pure white paint, nice clean white. So by now, the blue that we've painted is mostly dry. If it's not, why don't you pause and wave your canvas. You can actually wave your canvas up and down like this and it will help it dry faster. We want this background to be mostly dry before we start our lighthouse. So if it's not, go ahead doesn't have to be completely dry, but if you're using a lot of texture and a lot of paint, that's all right, but we want it to be dry so it doesn't smear. So what I'm gonna do, once your background is dry, you're gonna do a nice straight line like you mean it, right over the edge of the blue that you created. That's gonna create a nice shadow there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just cover up that blue and then any of those marks that I made when I was doing that with my brush, it's blending a little bit and that's okay. I feel like that's probably the reflection of the water. I'm just going to fill this in with white. I'm getting a little bit more paint on my palette. I'm getting a little more paint and I'm just gonna fill this in with white. And then I'm gonna create the top rounded ellipse. Uh, that's just a fancy way of saying slightly round shape. That's like the circle you see at the top of your coffee cup. This right here, this is an ellipse. So if our lighthouse is like this, see how this is slightly rounded on the top? It lets you know that it's circular. So we're gonna make this shape right on the top because right now mine is flat and I want this to be rounded. So I'm gonna do a very, very slight ellipse. Just going up and then down, just adding a slight curve and just smoothing that paint out a little bit. All right. And there we have it. You can add a few little uh, light white details if you want in your sand too. Maybe the sun is reflecting just a little bit. Have fun with the sand. My husband teases me and says that I'm solar powered because I like going to the beach so much here in Michigan. He's not wrong, it's true calms my soul and makes me happy. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're giving this a really good chance to dry and we are gonna add some detail in the clouds. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either take your brush, I will demonstrate it in blue on a paint palette here. You can either take your brush All right, put it down and do some circular shapes like this. We'll be doing this in white, but white doesn't stand out against it. So again, I just plunked it down and just kept going in a circular motion without picking my brush back up. And what that does is it distributes and smears the paint, but it also changes the hue. So there's more white on this blob and there'll be less over here. Or you can take a piece of paper towel or napkin, wad that up just a little bit. A cotton ball will work too. And we dab that in the paint. 
and you can dab that on and make some different textured clouds. All right, and that's what I did for the master is I used this dabbing effect. I shall show you. See how this just kind of dabbed right on there? So from far away, they look like fluffy little clouds and from way up close, you can see that I dabbed it on with a paper towel. So it's up to you what kind of clouds you wanna make and how you wanna put those on there. There's no wrong way. I will go ahead and get a paper towel and I will dab them on and you can even do both. If you dab them on with a paper towel first and then go back over it and smooth it with your brush, that's okay too. Have fun with this. Part of what we're doing is trying something new and exploring. I am all for that. All right. I'm just dabbing the paint on like this. Um, I don't have a lot of paint. I'm not doing solid blocks. So what I do is I'm dabbing it on my paint palette and then actually wiping some of it off. I don't want it to be big solid white dots, but as I go, it wears off and becomes a little bit wispier. I'm going right behind the lighthouse and I'll do a few over here on this side. some little bitty ones, some big ones, and then we have some wispy clouds. If you are feeling like experimenting, you can even do some circular shapes with your paper towel. So what that's going to do is, see you have some of these little fluffies, you can just kind of blend them out and soften those edges so they're not quite as bold. I'm going right up and over the edge of the lighthouse because we're using white paint and the lighthouse is white, so it doesn't matter. And we want these to look like the clouds go right behind it. So don't stop at your lighthouse, but continue over. Okay. So next, we are going to add some details to our lighthouse. I'm gonna add the red door. I'm gonna take my medium flat brush. You can also use your small brush if you want to do the outline. Why don't we do that? We'll use our small brush to do the outline and then we can fill it in with the bigger brush. I'm gonna start my door right at my horizon line is where the bottom is gonna be just above it, and I'm gonna wiggle the bottom, okay? So I'm just wiggling the bottom of it as wide as I want my door to be. I'm gonna add a nice arch. And if it helps, you can do a line on one side and a line on the other. Line on one side, line on the other, and then wiggle in between them. We'll make our nice arch. Think about how high you want it to be. Remember, this is far away. Go. Have my nice archway or a Pac Man ghost. You know, it's versatile. Right there. And then we are going to fill that in. All right, we all have our doors. Remember, if we start moving too fast for you, pause it. Take your time to do what you need to do. I paint very fast. 
I do it like it's my job. So I'm gonna take my small brush, I'm just gonna take the tiniest bit of black paint and mix it in with some white to make a nice sort of light, light gray. You don't want it too dark. This is just gonna be some shading for our lighthouse. So we don't want it to be too bold, very subtle. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is draw my door frame over my door. So I'm gonna just draw a little line on either side. Oh, that might be too light. There we go. A little darker for this part, I guess. I'm gonna draw a little line on the side and then I'm just gonna draw a little roof over it. And there we go. Remember, if you need to get your brush wet to help that paint glide across your canvas, don't be afraid to do that. All right, so there's my little door frame shadow right there. I'm gonna switch brushes. Make sure I rinse it off. I had red on this brush before, so I'm gonna really rinse it good or I will end up with a pink lighthouse which might be amazing. Maybe you're already doing a pink lighthouse and that would work for you. All right, I'm just gonna pick up some of this nice light gray. I'm gonna make a line on the left-hand side all the way down with this shadow here, right up against the edge. And I'm gonna do it again on the right-hand side too. And I'm just letting everybody know that this is round because it's shaded on the sides. That's what we're telling people. If you want to take a little bit darker gray and go over it, you can. All right. Once we have this, we are gonna make another ellipse right here with that gray. may not be the most beautiful ellipse I've ever made, my friends. If you just want to do a nice curved line, that's fine. So this is what we got going on. All right, once we have that, we're going to switch gears and make some grass. Now, I did mine um, by using a combination of the bright green a little yellow and a little brown. Now, if you wanna put a few um, little streaks of blue in there, maybe you have some bluegrass in there. I don't know where your beach is. Maybe you're at the ocean and you need to throw a little blue in there and that's okay. For me, I'm gonna start with green. I'm using my medium sized brush. If you have a round brush, that'll work too. Either way is fine and I'm just gonna start right from the front and go up. Now remember, it's shorter over here than it is over here. It's gonna be the same height all the way across and that's gonna make it look like it's going away. It's a perspective thing. Now your grass should overlap the brown just a little bit on either side. Now, how high up the grass is on your lighthouse is totally up to you. But I take it right up into that door. Now, grass doesn't all just grow straight up, right? Grass grows up to the left and up to the right. So make sure that as you're doing this, in addition to going straight up, that they overlap and go to the left and to the right. And give it that organic look. Woo! Careful with your canvas. Once I have a base of green on there, I'm gonna brush in just the tiniest bit of blue. I 
decided I want to do that. Even though I'm in Michigan, it's going to darken that up just a little bit. I'm brushing just the littlest bit of blue into my green. And that's just going to give me the tiniest bit of shadow. Not much. I don't know how many of you are good at moderation, but I struggle with it. So do your best. We're just filling this section in right here. All right, I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Get that blue off. One more green on here. And then we're gonna go in with some browns and some yellows. Let's do some yellow first. I'm just taking a little bit of yellow right on the tip of my brush. And again, I'm just making this grass by just the lighter you press, the smaller your line is gonna be, okay? Just adding a few highlights. This is that grass that turned brown or maybe the sun is hitting it just a little bit. It also helps it stand out against the water just a touch. So I'm just going back through and adding a few of these yellow highlights in here. Filling that in a little. So once you've added your yellow highlights, we're actually gonna add some brown. These are gonna be our shadows to our dune grass. I'm gonna make sure that I have at least one sticking out here so that people kind of know where the edge of my grass is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just flick a little bit in there, especially toward the bottom, because that's where they're shadowed, it's down, down at the very bottom. I'm just gonna flick some of this in down at the bottom just so people know that this is where it's darker. The sun is not hitting the lower part of the grass. If you do it and you're like, that's intense, it's too much brown. Put some green on your brush and just do a few green spots right over it and that will tone it down a little bit. And again, on this side, we're gonna just do a little bit of brown. Ooh, not that much. That's a lot. All right, so what I did, I put way too much brown on that corner, you see it? So instead of freaking out, I'm a freaker outer. I just put some more green on my brush to blend that in. All right, so brown and green will make that nice shadow too. So I blended that in, no crisis. Wiped my brush off on my paper towel. Now I'm gonna go back in and just add the rest of my brown low lights here. There we go. All right. I always love an opportunity to just add a little bit more color to my sand, a little bit more shadow. This greeny brown is just calling to me, so I'm doing it. All right, once you have your grass on there. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna go back up and add some of the final details on our lighthouse, all right? We're gonna be using black and you can either use your small brush or your medium brush for this. We are gonna add the top. Now, we're gonna be making a rectangle with a triangle on top, okay? You do a line right in the middle and then do two lines on either side. So you have three lines. Do a line in the middle that lines up right with the center of your lighthouse and then two lines on the side. Make the 
goes a little taller and that is going to be the top of my lighthouse right here. going to just make that follow the curve of the ellipse real nice. I'm going to just do a nice black line right over the whole top of it. So just bringing that line right across and filling this in nice. And then I'm just going to do a little triangle, put a little hat on it. There we go. All right, I'm gonna add a little safety rail in case there's any little people running around up here. It's a little guard rail on it. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So all I did was do a little line across. And you can do this with your small brush. Or if you feel confident making small marks with your medium brush, do that. And then I just did a few little lines right across there. And we have a little safety rail. All right, I'm gonna get real tricky with you here, okay? I'm gonna put some more black paint on my brush. I don't want a lot of it. I'm just dabbing the paint on, just, I'm just brushing it on, all right? I'm not scooping it up. I'm just dabbing the paint on, just like that. We're gonna add our window up here. I'm figuring out where the center is quick in my head. I'm just gonna make a tiny mark right here. Ready? Touch the canvas, pull down, and then square off the bottom. Then I'm gonna mark where my other window is gonna be. This one only has two windows. I'm gonna to switch to my small brush. And we're just gonna make a nice little arch, just like we did before. Nice little archway. Fill that in. Um, when I've taught this before, people have put little faces in there, little people hanging out. Someone had a ghost floating in there, which I thought was very clever and cute and funny. Um, so you do you. Make sure you, you make this your own. All right, um, one of our final stages, and you can actually do this too with this color. Um, wipe off some of that black or get a little bit darker gray, and we're actually gonna add a tiny bit of a shadow right under here, just a touch, just a touch up here too. I feel like the sun is right over here, shining this way. So we need to shade this side just a little bit more. Right, the last thing I think that we're gonna do, as far as instruction, is add our lighthouse light. So I'm gonna take white paint on my brush and I'm just gonna make a tiny little circle right here. Don't go over it too many times or it will turn gray. Nobody wants a gray light. Won't guide your ships to safety at all. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow on my brush right here, and I'm just gonna bloop that in. Ready? Boop. Right over the middle. So we did white first and then a little bit of yellow. Uh, and then last but not least, you need to make sure that you sign your painting. my little mark right here. You sign your painting and we're good. Thank you so much for painting with us today. Again, if you want to get some of our painting kits, it has the supplies that you need, an easel, paint brushes, canvas, paint, um, as well as access to several of our online classes. You can find most of our classes at our yeah, on our website, on our website at theartoflife.info, all one word. 
You can also find lots of other interesting, fun stuff at theartoflife.info on YouTube. Sorry, my brain is shutting down right now. I'm like, ah, bear with me, I glitch. All right, we're gonna kick this out. You ready? Send me your vibes. All right, thank you. Okay, so on Facebook, we are The Art of Life Guided Painting. The Art of Life Guided Painting on Facebook. We are theartoflife.info for our website and for our Instagram and then for YouTube. For YouTube, we are The Art of Life Guided Painting as well. Did you get all that? Do you have it all? You can rewind it and play that confusing thing back as often as you need. You can message us through Facebook at The Art of Life Guided Painting as well in case you want actual answers to any of the things I just said. We have local classes in uh, the West Michigan area and of course we have online classes. We're happy to see you. Have a blessed day. Thanks for painting with us.